All right, here we go. Number one, write this down. We all have a platform for God's glory. We all have a platform to use for God's glory. Y'all say all. all. Y'all say that's me. No matter what stage of life you are in, we all have a platform to use for God's glory. 1 Peter 4.10 says this, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. What is that gift in your life? And my question for you today is, are you using that gift that God has given you to glorify his name and to reach people and to see people come to know Jesus? Colossians 3.23 says it this way, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So whatever that is that you're doing, use your platform for God's glory. Second thing we need to know is that failure and trials will come when you're on his team. Failure and trials will come. I think a lot of times we think, okay, I've signed up. I've put the jersey on. Jesus, I'm in. And then we expect to bat a thousand and never drop a pass and never have trials, and yet the reality of life is that we're going to face some difficulties. First Peter 5, 8, and 9 tells it this way. Your enemy, it says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We have to know that the enemy doesn't want us to use our platform for God's glory. And so because of that, he's going to do things that he, he uses those things to try to deter and distract us. James 1, 2 through 4 says it this way. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Why? Because he says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be complete and needing nothing. So you've got to know that when you step out and say, yes, Lord, I'm in it to serve you, we're going to face trials. And then finally, the third thing we've got to know is that we can trust God on the journey. We can trust God on the journey. As we seek to follow him, we have to trust the plans that he has for our life. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says it this way, trust in the Lord with some of your heart. No, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. I love the way Proverbs 16, 9 says it. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And so God will be faithful to guide us as we say, yes, Lord, I'm in. I wanna follow you. I trust you, but I'm going to surrender fully to the plan you have for my life. And as a means of a living illustration, of those three things, I've asked Blake, who, if you know anything about Blake, Blake and Mary Catherine are members of our church. Uh, Blake played football at UT. He played in the NFL. He is a current UT football coach. And most importantly, they are a godly couple that we are so blessed and thankful to know. They, flow, they flew back from Disney at 5.30 this morning just to be here with us. Come on, somebody. Church family, will you welcome my good friend, Blake Gideon? It's nothing new for Blake, because Blake gets up at like 2.30 in the morning every day anyways to, to be at the field. Uh, Blake, thank you all for, for uh, just making that commitment to come back with us and uh, just to be here. I was telling them earlier, I was like checking his flight just to make sure everything was okay. Uh, candidly, we actually recorded a, 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 like an interview, this interview a couple weeks ago just in case something happened um, just with his flight. But we're thankful you're here in, in the flesh. And so I want to start by just having you share a little bit about your testimony. So just, you know, how you grew up, when you came yep. to faith, and when your faith became your own. Yeah, well, first off, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm honored. We're honored as a family to, to have this platform and um, be able to share a little bit about our journey. And mm -hmm. it's all of us. Mm -hmm. I keep pointing out there to my wife. Uh, it's definitely not just me. It's all of us. So thank you for, for this opportunity. Um, okay, my dad, which is out there in the audience, um, was a longtime high school football coach, mm -hmm. right? We moved all around the state, mm -hmm. okay? So I could name all the towns for you if you want me to. Um, but a lot of different places, and we had to really grow tight as a family. That's one thing I learned early on, mm -hmm. right? And what was the, the centerpiece, the main pillar of our family was our faith, right? And so I'm, I'm so blessed that my parents raised us in the church, mm -hmm. raised us in the faith. And what that did for me was... 
that opened my eyes and my ears and my heart to what does it sound like? I'm expecting the spirit to speak to me, right? <laughs> um, but there's a time when it becomes your own, right? right? And that's, that's when that big step is, is taken. And so for me, that was, that was in the junior high age because that was really my first taste of real, say real, um, the most freedom I had had right. in my life at the time, right? And a big thing for me at that age, now I'm starting competitive, like school locker room sports, right? War zone. And it, exactly, right? And there's, <laughs> there's a lot of things. There's, there's people that go right and left, right, right? In, in those locker rooms. And there's young men trying to, to learn how to become um, grown men. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of decisions made, made there. So for me, that was when my faith became my own. And it's still becoming more my own mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So everything I go through, even now in my 30s with a wife and kids, everything I go through, it becomes more and more my own, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it, I, it started for me um, there in junior high, and that's, I can say this, they won't take offense to it. Um, it was no longer what my dad just wanted for me, right. what my mom just wanted for me, mm -hmm. my, my older sister, all that, it became mine. Mm. And I didn't need a go-between I didn't need a vessel to get to my God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like it was just me and God. Mm -hmm. And I could come to him at any time with anything, and he's a lot more understanding than I originally thought. Mm -hmm. That's good. Right? So, and I think that's important because everybody, I love that you said you're in your 30s and you're still learning to follow him because I think a lot of times we fight this mentality of, you know, we kind of feel like we've arrived, you know, and, and it's just like, I, there's a lot of metaphors in the Christian life, hence the Apostle Paul using some metaphors of, of athletics and running a race. And so just like an athlete never stops getting better, right. we as Christians never stop growing. Right. So, uh, so you played football at UT in the NFL, mm -hmm. um, maybe share with us just a little, like what was your favorite memory from either UT or the NFL? I'd be curious to know, did you prefer UT or the NFL? You know, <laughs> like which one? I, just because I, I had a different experience, so go right, ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's very different, I, right? You, yes. You had your taste of, right. of the professional right. sports right. Um, avenue, and it, it's so much more transactional mm -hmm. in professional sports, mm -hmm. right? And there's grown men with their own families in that locker room, and so whenever practice is over with or meetings are over with, everybody kind of goes their own way. Right. And it's not like in college to where we're still all growing and learning to become men, right? To where you're, you're gathering up at each other's houses and apartments and all that. And there's, there's a lot of growth that happens in that downtime. My favorite was definitely my time at UT. Hmm. Uh, I grew tremendously. The Lord certainly protected me from day one from my recruiting visit and the guys that hosted me. Some names you guys would recognize, Colt McCoy, Jordan Shipley, those guys that took me under their wing early on mm. and showed me not just how to live right in the limelight whenever the, the cameras were turned on, but how to live your life all the time, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, favorite memory um, was probably 2009, my sophomore year, winning the Big 12 championship. Mm. And not just the fact that we won the game. That's really cool to win a championship and put on the ring and the confetti comes down and all that. But how we did it, um, the older I've, I've gotten, it becomes more about the process to me, mm. right? And the product kind of takes care of itself. Mm. So appreciating the process of waking up every day early, whenever you're tired, you're going without sleep, your body hurts, your mind is fatigued, right? Mm. Your spirit is fatigued. That's what I look back on. That's what I remember the most, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In those times of two-a-days and getting ready for that season, because of all the expectations that came with that year, there's a lot of heat on a bunch of 18 to 22 year olds, mm -hmm. right? In a big football metropolis, like is 30 miles east of us right mm -hmm. now, right? To where everything you do, you're living your life in a fishbowl and um, that's, that breaks a lot of guys, but it, it makes most guys stronger, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As long as you're surrounded by the right people. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely that season and, and winning that championship because of the expectations and, and how we got there. That's right. So a lot of people think that sports is all that. They think it's all the ups. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that there are far more downs and far more right. difficulties than there are ups and right. than there are limelight moments. And so um, talk through just what, both between UT and the NFL, some challenges that you faced 
and how God grew you in and through those challenges? Yeah, I think number one, just going off to college, right? And being away from my parents and um, my parents trusted me and their 18 years of infusing knowledge and right and wrong and living um, uh, through the faith and um, to where they didn't have to check on me all the time. They, they knew I needed to go touch the hot stove every now and then and figure out my way, right? And keep this thing, keep this thing between the lines. Um, I think that's important for any young adult growing up, right? Um, so, I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember my train of thought here where I was going with that. When we talked last week, you talked about a certain game. <laughs> right. I don't want to knew, put you on the spot. <laughs> it's all right. Hey, I, I was nicknamed the king of toast. <laughs> and so that means I struck out a lot. So you can't get much worse than that. Yeah. So I don't know if you wanted to talk about that, but that's what we talked about okay, the other day. So, so the game yes. that, that Russell's referring to, um, my freshman year, okay, I mentioned you live your life in a fishbowl down there at Texas, right? You're for lack of a better word, you're the celebrity. There's not pro sports franchises down there, right? It's you're, you're highlighted early on as a freshman whenever you step on campus. So I came in at the right time for me. Um, there were some some injuries in my position group and all that, and, and the competition had depleted a little bit. So I was able to play and start early on as an 18-year-old freshman. Um, and we were trucking along in the season, playing really well. We're undefeated, number one in the country. We go to... Lubbock, Texas on Halloween night. Um, we're undefeated, they're undefeated, both top five ranked, right? College game days there, Coach Lee Corso, all the cool stuff, right? Um, get down towards the end of the game, we've got the lead, I've got an opportunity to go win the game for my team with a game ceiling interception, I drop it, mm. right? And everybody kind of remembers the next play that was thrown to Michael Crabtree on the sideline. He tiptoes the sideline. They win, rush the field, pandemonium, mm -hmm. right? That changed the course of our season, mm. right? And everybody kind of looks at it as you're sitting on the couch and you're watching, well, it just changed the course of the season. Well, that changed the course of a bunch of lives that day, right? And there was a lot of young men in that locker room, myself included, that had to make a decision about how we're going to take on adversity, and really what we're going to lean on and who we're going to lean on. That's right. I think that's the main thing. Um, my faith, you, you hit on the, the adversity and the trials and tribulations, right, all through James. Um, my faith has grown probably because I'm hard-headed mm -hmm. through trials, mm -hmm. right, through getting knocked down mm -hmm. and getting humbled mm -hmm. by God. Mm -hmm. And that certainly humbled me, mm -hmm. right? all of the, the flood of opinions and should have done this, could have done this, right? Um, and passing of blame and all that, well, that was the time for us to really um, lock arms and, and figure out who we were as a group uh, and also do some soul searching individually. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was able to get through that as a young guy because of where my foundation was, That's right? right? And I make no bones about that. I, I tell my players now that it's too much, man, for you to do on your own. At some point, you'll get taken to your knees, mm. right? And everybody important in your life at some point in one way or another will let you down, mm -hmm. right? But he'll never let you down. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what I found, mm -hmm. right? So that was that point for me. Mm -hmm. um, that was, that was a, another big turning point, a stepping stone in mm -hmm. my life and in my faith. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thankful for it now. I wouldn't have said thank you back then, right, in 2008 and that, that October night in Lubbock. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's, it's changed the course of my life. Mm -hmm. It changed who I looked for in a woman to marry, mm -hmm. right? I wanted somebody that had gone through things, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that was strong, that came out on the other side, right, mm -hmm. standing up tall. Mm -hmm. um, it changed what I looked for as far as um, confidants in my career, right, who I leaned on, the types of personalities I wanted to surround myself, better men than myself, mm -hmm. better women than who I was as a person, right? Um, so it, it changed everything for me, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, it's, for all of us, we, we may not all experience failure as public 
as you and I did, and I experienced a lot of it, you know. Um, but the reality is failure can shape us more than anything in life. And, and we can let it uh, cause us to run away from God, or we can let it allow us to lean into him even more. And it's encouraging to hear that, that that's really a lot of what shaped you as well. Right. So um, one of the things I didn't know about you um, that I found out when, when I came to visit a while back mm -hmm. was just the, the story of you stepping away from your career. And I was, I mean, candidly, I was blown away just at your humility, your um, just, just uh, heart of service. And so talk through that process. You're in the NFL. Mm -hmm. If I remember right, you, you had a, a contract in mm -hmm. place and then God had put something on your heart for a long time and you decided to step away. Will you talk through that, that process? Yeah, I was, I was in a great situation in Denver with the Broncos. Um, great leadership, ownership, awesome team. That was the Peyton Manning years. Um, they had a plan for me. Right? They had offered me an extension. Um, I'm going to be one of the four safeties they're going to carry on the active roster. Things were looking up, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, had, I had a yearning on my heart. This, not just from me, it comes from four of my best friends that I've grown up with um, that I want to serve in a different way. So I retired from the NFL at the ripe old age of 24, <laughs> right? Um, drove home to Austin, packed up all my stuff, drove home to Austin, and went and enlisted mm. um, at the end of the weekend. And that was, that had been a long time coming. Um, for me, I felt like a lot of things had come easy in my life. And again, just kind of the, the hard-headedness, right, of, of <laughs> Blake here. Um, I needed to put myself through more um, intense trial, right? I need to figure out who I was more. And again, that's, I, I had some influence from three of my buddies, four of my buddies that I'd grown up with that are Navy SEALs, Green Berets, um, that just got done serving after a decade in the teams. Um, and so I wanted to go that route. And I didn't know at the time how that was going to end for me. I, I thought I knew because everything had come easy and I've been successful at a lot of things in my life, but that gets cut short and how that came to an end, I totally wasn't prepared for, mm. right? Now I'm 25 years old, I've left the NFL, I've changed kind of how I train, I'm swimming and doing all this stuff now that I needed to pass these tests. And now I'm moving back in with my mom and dad mm. at 25, I got a college degree and I'm, I was in the NFL mm. a few months ago, <laughs> right? And so I, I I struggled there for a couple of months, um, just mentally and spiritually there at, at mom and dad's house, feeling like uh, I'm dead weight. What, where did I go wrong? Did I make a mistake? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what was I being taught here, mm -hmm. right? I think that was the most humbling part of my life. I'm sure. Right? That I, I kind of, I felt like I could do that on my own, mm -hmm. right? And it's too much. Like I said, I, I tell my players, it, it's too much to do this life how you want to do it alone, mm -hmm. right? And I did that alone, mm -hmm. right? And I found out the result mm -hmm. of that. And every time I felt um, God trying to help me, trying to speak to me, trying to direct me, I pushed that away. I knew better, mm -hmm. right? I had, I had some better answers. And so I needed that humbling, mm -hmm. And again, without that, I wouldn't be who I am today. More importantly, have surrounded myself with better people than I am mm -hmm. today. It's, it's one of those things, again, I wouldn't have said thank you at the time, but now here we are. It's, I don't know where I would be sitting here next to you. I don't, I don't think I would be here, mm -hmm. right? And experiencing some of the cool things I've been able to do in my life. Mm -hmm. So that's when I, when I think about that journey, um, I'm reminded of that verse we just talked about, Proverbs 16:9. A, a person plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. And right. you know, I just want everybody to, to, to draw, lean into this. This guy, he will never brag on himself. He walked away from a professional football career to go serve our country. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. It's amazing. And God closes that door to open perhaps an even greater door that is what you're doing now. And as we t have talked about, coaching 
is a tremendous platform. I, I coached briefly before I stepped into ministry, and I've said this to you, I've said it to others. I feel like in some ways God can open doors for Coach Russ a lot faster than he can for Pastor Russ. Because a lot of times when people ask me what I do and I say I'm a pastor, their eyes get this big and they're like, I gotta go, I got a phone call, right? But you have just a, a such a great entree into the life of young people at a formidable season of their life. So talk through that platform, mm -hmm. how you see God using the two of y'all together to impact the lives of these young people. Yeah, I know how, how formative those years were for me and how I made some decisions to go right or left, right? And without the influence that I had of those coaches that coached me at that time period in my life, right? I always had the echo of my dad's voice, right? That was my high school coach in the back of my head. I knew that, but again, mom and dad aren't there mm -hmm. anymore, right? They're, they're up the road. They're not waking me up every morning. So that's really the reason why I settled with this age group, right? the first time a lot of these guys are away from mom and dad, right? And having to make those decisions about who they wanna be, what they want people to think of them, what's important in their life. Um, so for me, um, which Billy Graham talks about it a lot, right? How a coach can affect more, more people in a lifetime than a pastor, right? Mm -hmm. Or more in a year than a pastor can mm -hmm. in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I don't see what we do as too different, mm -hmm. right? It's about how we live our lives, right. right? You stand up here on the stage to where everybody associates that with Christianity, faith, Jesus, right? Why can't they say that about me when they see me in the defensive backs room mm. down there in Austin? Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's twofold, right? Obviously, I get to share my faith without really ever saying the word Jesus until the end. Right? It's a way that my players see me live my life. Call it like it is, at some point I'll be fired in this career. Mm. Like a coach that hasn't been fired yet just hadn't coached long enough. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm 10 so years that's in. Why, that's why I quit. I've already been <laughs> fired once. Yeah. That once was enough for me. So I'm not lying. <laughs> it's luckily that hasn't happened yet, mm -hmm. but it, it's a career path of turmoil. Mm and trials and tribulations and there's high expectations. If we don't win a certain amount of games down there in downtown Austin, then there's gonna be somebody else coming in there into my office pretty quick, mm -hmm. right? And so my players get to see me and my family in those times that are really stressful, mm -hmm. to say the least, where those kids that I have, little Barrett and little Catherine, are counting on me having that job to eat, right? Mm -hmm. So it's. You, you think of all those things as a dad, right, and how important that is, and that's, um, it just adds to the stress, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so they get to see how I behave in those moments, right? Do I lose it? Do I fly off the handle? Um, or is there something about me to where I'm grounded in something else or someone else? Mm -hmm. And that's my chance to really witness, mm -hmm. right? I, we, don't, we don't start our position meeting with a prayer every day, right? I don't know where a lot of these guys come from in their spiritual walk, and it's my job to live my life a certain way to where they see there's something different about Coach Gideon, mm. right? He's not affected the same as everybody else, either on the staff or on this team, whenever we lose to Oklahoma up there in the Cotton Bowl. Mm. And the whole world, the media storm and ESPN is, is falling down on our head. He, he doesn't respond the same way everybody else does. Mm -hmm. And so then that's where the questions come. Mm -hmm. And it happens more often than I thought mm -hmm. going into this thing. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's going to come into my office and ask me. But it happens a lot. I believe it. It happens with most of my players, mm -hmm. matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And so now it becomes that conversation piece. Mm -hmm. And we're able to talk about our faith and what are y'all doing this weekend? Mm. What are you doing Sunday morning? What are you doing Wednesday night, mm -hmm. right? Are you living your life how you wanna be perceived, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. the other thing is just from a humanistic standpoint of my eight scholarship safeties right now, half of them and really half at any given time, any given year, either don't know or don't have a relationship with biological father. Wow. Right, and so now, Okay, high school coach was a great role model. He's not there anymore. Hmm. Now who is it? Hmm. Right? They're looking at me. 
not just am I Christian, am I living by the faith, how am I treating my wife? They see me around my kids. They come out to our house. A couple of them are coming out tonight to watch the game. They see me around my kids. Am I the guy, right, that they see themselves wanting to be? Um, so th there's plenty of ways to witness, right? And you mentioned that quote, mm -hmm. right? When, when necessary, use words. There will be a time, right? But just live a certain way. The last thing, I was always nervous about that moment of witnessing and having the right words. Like, this is the moment where this person, whether I'm here in Dripping Springs or in Uganda, Africa, which my sister spent a lot of time doing, um, I was always so afraid I was going to have the wrong words. Mm. And it would just turn them off. And they're like, all right, well, that was, that was God's shot mm. into their heart, and I screwed it up as the vessel. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't worry about that anymore. I choose to live my life a certain way, right, and, and honor him and in turn honor my wife and my kids and my upbringing. And I know that at the proper time, he'll give me the words. That's right. Whenever those questions are asked. It's Luke 14 right there. The That's proper right. time. Yeah. That's I know right. you had that memorized. That's right. um, <laughs> so so I, I love that you mentioned, and, and there's just so much we can all take away from that because I think a lot of people, even if you spent time in church, you think, I want to be a light, but I don't know what to say. And a lot of it is just how we live our life and how we handle things. And then as those opportunities come up, then we have the ability to speak into their life. Um, my last question for you is one of the things that I have just really grown to respect about you as I've watched y'all from afar is you are busier than anybody I know. Like people think I'm busy and you are way busier. Um, but yet I love the way you love and serve your wife and your family. And the thing I, I especially respect is you are gone a lot but when you're home, you're all in. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to share with just the dads in the room. We had this a parenting talk before, yeah. just what you try to do to guard and protect the, the, the family time that you get. Yeah, so we have a saying in coaching, right? Because there's so many different outliers and, and outside influences and things that are out of your control to be where your feet are, right? We say it all the time. We say it to our players, worry about the math test right after practice, right? Let's do football when it's football time, academics when it's academics time, right? Let's, let's try to segment that and stay organized in our mind where we're not overwhelming ourselves, or we're just going to be average at all of it, mm -hmm. right? Let's be great one thing at a time. Um, in order for me to be where my feet are and be at the office totally and locked in on the film study, whatever we're doing game planning wise or at practice, and also be all in with my kids when those two rugrats come sprinting towards the front door when I walk in at whatever hour and be all in with my wife, um, there's a lot on her plate, right? And for me to say, like, well, Blake's very busy. Yeah, that makes her busier, mm. right? Like, she's, she's got to raise them. Mm. And she knows that. We talk about it. Um, I had a great example watching a coach's wife as I was growing up. Wake up the kids, cook for them, get them dressed, get them to school, do whatever she's got to do throughout the day, then do it again all by herself mm. whenever they get home or they wake up from nap time, right? And I'm none the wiser. I'm at the office from 5.30 to 11 at night, right? At least six nights a week during the season. So um, for me... I've got so much more, I've got confidence to be able to do what I do because God has blessed me with the woman he's put in my life, mm -hmm. right? And I knew what to look for, mm -hmm. right? I, I, I saw that example a lot. So um, I, I do have to check myself at times if I'm being quite honest. I love what I do. I love the game of football. I love teaching and growing these young men. Um, and I love my family. And there's times to where I need to keep those two from stepping on each other's toes. Mm. Family's going to win, mm. right? Um, but at the same time, I've got to take care of my family by staying employed. Mm. And so it's, it's a fine line, right? But I don't know if she totally knew what she was getting into. She found Famous out. last words. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Um, this was definitely 
not what she signed up for all the way. Mm -hmm. But she loves me. She loves the Lord, mm -hmm. right? She knows the path that we're walking, right? And whatever grenades we have to dodge along the way, we're good. Mm -hmm. We know we're grounded as a household. Mm -hmm. um, and that just, that, that gives me the confidence. That, that gives me such um, peace in my mind to go do what I need to do with all the requirements and, and all the time that it takes from me. Mm -hmm. So. That's great. Well, I just want you to know, um, number one, I, I just, we all love and respect both of you for what you do. Um, I think there's something all of us that are dads in the room can take away for, from how you strive to be all in when you are home, because no we're all busy in this time, but we need to protect the family time when we have it. Uh, and want y'all to know that, that as your church family, we're committed to praying for you. Uh, we are cheering for you no matter whether people wear maroon. This is Dripping Springs, by the way. So he, was, he gave me the side eye when he walked in. I said, hold on, it's Dripping Springs Tigers. I'm not an Aggie. I'm not a OU fan. No offense to Aggie. Aggies are OU fans, uh, but I want y'all to know that we're here with y'all. We're, we're your number one fans, and uh, we're cheering you. for y'all as you, as you continue to, both of you, use the platform that God's given you uh, for his glory. So church family, can you th join me in thanking Blake for being with us today? So. Thanks, man. There's so much that we can all take away from what he had to share. No matter what age or stage of life we find ourselves in, uh, we all have a platform. And my prayer is that you would walk away from today, whether from the time this morning in Connect or this time together today to know God's given us a platform and he wants us to use it. And most often it is in how we live our life that is the best gospel that we could ever preach. Hey, thanks for watching the Canyon Church YouTube channel, and we hope the message you just watched encouraged your faith and helps you to follow Jesus more closely. And if you've never given your life to Jesus, we want to share with you how you can do that. If you text the word DECIDE to the number that's going to be on your screen, someone from our team is going to follow up with you and help answer any questions you might have about following Jesus. Also want you to know thank you so much for your support of our church, both for our church family and our extended family. The only way we can bring messages like the one you just watched is through your generosity. If you would like to support the work that God is doing through our ministry, you can go to sunsetcanyonchurch.org and click on the button that says give. We hope you have a great week and we pray that God continues to work in your life in the days to come.